Hi hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's project is going to be servicing our side-by-side. -side. What it is, a 2014 Honda 700 Pioneer. And what we need to do is change all the filters, check the fluid levels, check the brake pads, check the antifreeze, all of the things you would do to to service one to get it ready to be used for the season. All right, first thing you gotta do, since we're gonna change the oil, is let this thing warm up. So I'm gonna take the time to check some things that don't involve the engine. So we're gonna start it, let it start warming up, and I'm gonna check the antifreeze, and then we're gonna check the differential uh, fluid levels. And since it's not hot, it's not a problem taking the radiator cap off if it's hot. Don't ever take that off. Touch it, make sure it's cool. The gauge on the dash says that the temperature level is low, so that means that it's not warmed up. And we are completely full. So that's full, and if we look down at the overflow tank, here we can see that it's in the zone for the right amount of fluid so what will happen is this thing heats up this fluid will expand go into the overflow tank and then when it cools down it'll pull it back in and it keeps air out of the system and it raises the boiling point of the liquid in here so that it'll actually cool better the next thing we're going to do is check the oil level in the differential. The cap to check the oil level is this one right here and it takes a 17 millimeter socket. And the oil level on it's perfect. It looks good. You want it to be just touching the threads. And it's not dirty. I don't see any metallic flakes in it. So this one's good. We'll go back and check the back. When you take the cap off, you want to double check your O-ring. Make sure that there's not a bunch of dirt. The O-ring's not cut. So this is your back one. It looks the same um, and same thing. 17 millimeter ratchet or socket, or you could use a wrench on this one. To the edge of the thread so it's good i'm just putting a little oil on here because it was a little sticky getting it off
change the oil on this. You need to take the seat out and raise your bed up. The seat you just pick up on the front because it snaps in, pull it forward, and set it out. These little rubber grommets go around studs that are under the seat, and these hook in the back. So to raise the bed, it's just this handle. to the dipstick, all you do is grab the back of this, pull it over the hooks at the back, and then just fold it forward. And your dipstick is down here, you'll see it on the side of the box. It's right here. And this is your oil fill neck. So when we get ready to drain it, we need to take this off so it doesn't pull a vacuum and it'll let the oil drain out faster. Right, to drain the oil, you've got to remove these four bolts out of this access panel in the skid plate and slide it to the side. And I'm hoping that these bolts haven't gotten rusty and it strips out one of these inserts. And if you stick your arm up in here like I just did, be mindful of that exhaust pipe because if you let this thing warm up, it's going to be hot. And this is a good opportunity to get that stick out that's been in there forever. Alright, there we go. That cross member in there kind of wedges it up the drain bolt is this one right here and it's a 17 so that's convenient and my drain pan is just a mortar mixing pan and they're usually big enough that you can catch whatever mess you're gonna make and this bolt is really long almost didn't have it back far enough and usually if you buy the kit the kit will come with a new crush washer I don't believe there's a new o-ring I'll have to double check but if you put the new crush washer on you're gonna have to take that o-ring off Okay, the oil change kit that I got was just off of Amazon, but it is all Honda products. And the one for this specific side-by-side -side comes with four quarts of oil. It takes 3.1 quarts with the filter change. It came with the oil filter. There's the part number. It comes with a cute little disposable funnel. Look at there. It's a kite. And it comes with a new crush washer for that uh, drain plug. So I'm gonna pull the O-ring off, hopefully without cutting it, put the new crush washer on, and if I do cut that O-ring, I'll have to go into my stash and get another one. All right, this O-ring's still good. It's proud of the shank on the plug. It's still pliable, so it's not hard. A lot of times heat will degrade these so you can just roll it off pull your crush washer off get your replacement off of here Make sure you get all this good tape off of here. Stuff probably made in China. Good Lord. Put your crush washer back on. And then roll your O-ring back over. 
double check your o-ring make sure you didn't crack it or cut it and looks good to go so now we need to put this back in and then change out the filter And because of where we're changing this oil out in the driveway, it was pointed a little low at the front. So I stuck a jack under the front of it to get it a little nose high to finish draining that out. It was probably a quarter of a cup still in there, but if we're putting fresh oil in. We ought to put as much in as we can. All right, so now we need to put this cover back on. I did with it. Oh, there it is. Uh, and of course, like all new vehicles and equipment, changing the oil makes a mess. <sighs> Stuff gets everywhere. I guess if the oil gets everywhere, don't have to worry about the threads rusting up on those bolts. Okay, now on to the filter. All right, to get to the filter, it's just like on the other side. You've got a little rubber cover that goes over it and you pull back off of these hooks and then it just folds back. And your filter is down here on the side of the engine. On this other side is your electrical components. The fuse box is actually up under the hood. But your batteries in here, some relays, your uh, ECU, and some other stuff. And this cord is where I wired in a battery tender for when we leave this thing parked for a long time. One of the complaints that people have made about these things is that the battery that comes in it is weak. I will agree with that wholeheartedly. I replaced the battery, and when I replaced it, I put a gel battery in here instead of a typical lead acid and this battery's been in here for three years maybe four and we've used it enough in the last couple of years that i've not had to put the battery tender on it but the first year we had it it stayed parked for most of the winter so i put the battery tender on it and the battery stayed just fine so on to the filter to get the filter off, you'll look down here and you'll see what looks like a hub cap on the side of the engine. I'll show it to you in a minute. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt head sticking through it. And that is the center piece for the filter. And there'll be the filter, a washer, and a spring in there. And you wanna make sure and put that thing back in in the right order. Here we are looking down through that opening. And there's the cap on the filter. And then 
the 10 millimeter bolt is right there in the center of it. It's kind of hard to see down in here, but that's where it is. And there's a drain hole underneath of this. If you look straight down, you can see some light coming through there. It's not a 10 millimeter, it's 12 millimeter. The 10 millimeter is for the plate underneath. Of course, you can not be held in too low a disregard for thinking that it's 10 millimeter because dang near everything else is. Sucker on there. Come on off of there. Well, there's the center piece. That dang o ring was tight. There we go. There's the filter. Okay, so I referred to the maintenance manual on this thing and the owner's manual just to make sure I was not mistaken. And the way this goes together, there is supposed to be a spring that goes in here and then a washer and then your filter slips on and when you tighten it all down it pushes the filter against a mating flange on the inside of the case in the oil filter housing or opening or hole and what has happened Keeping with the theme of you don't get what you paid for, um, we took this into a dealership and had it serviced for its last service. Because I didn't want to mess with adjusting the valves and all of that stuff. When the dealership put this thing back together, they did not put the spring and the washer back in it. So for this last maintenance interval, it's not been effectively filtering the oil. I didn't find any metal shavings or anything in the oil. I didn't find any in the bottom of the oil filter housing. So it's been circulating oil. Everything has stayed lubricated, but it's not been as clean as it could have been. So what I'm gonna do is put this back together because we ran it without the right parts in there order the parts, and then when the parts come in, I'm going to take the filter housing back apart, put the spring and washer in there, put it back together, and top off any oil that we've lost. So I'm going to continue to service this just like it was back together correctly, show you the oil and all of that, and then I'll put it back together correctly once I get the parts in. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in and then when the filter when I get the spring and the washer in take it back apart and put it back together correctly it was running so we know that it will run without that it just doesn't filter the oil very well Okay, that's back together incorrectly. All right, like I said previously, with a oil and filter change, it's 3.1 quarts of oil. And the recommendation is you put 
two, maybe a little more in it, run it, which will fill up the oil filter and drop the level on the dipstick, then you check that and top it off. Okay, it's about half of that third quart. Start it up, let it fill up the filter, and then we'll check it. All right, how many little napkin you so proud to get? Touching the dipstick. Probably gonna put that back in. <laughs> about 3.2 ounces which is a tenth of a quart in the middle so since we gotta take that filter housing back apart I'm not gonna worry about getting it completely full until we fix the filter okay, to reset the maintenance indicator on your gauge cluster you hold in this button and then turn the key on and then the wrench should start flashing and then go away. And now your maintenance interval indicator is reset. All right, the last thing I need to check is the air filter, which are just, this is your air filter housing. There's your fuel injection unit. You just pop the spring clips off, pull the lid off and see what kind of treasures are inside. Ooh, there's a lot of treasures in there. It's really not too bad, as dusty as it is out here. Don't we go, don't we go get the other one? But we do need to uh, clean this and or replace it and vacuum out all the dirt that's in here. If you don't want to fight with a Phillips screwdriver that screw clamp that's on here is a six millimeter head. Thing is nasty. Now to clean these filters, I just use a, a putty knife and scrape the bigger stuff off of the outside. Don't uh, you know? I use the side of the knife. Don't get crazy with it so you don't tear the foam. All you're trying to do is remove the dirt and dust and weeds and stuff that are clumped up from the oil and then i just use dawn dishwashing detergent uh, dawn's really good at cutting grease and this is one of those pump sprayer things and all we do to <laughs> refill this is take the top off put a about three or four tablespoons of dawn in there and then fill it up with water 
and then you're not paying whatever the exorbitant amount of money is they charge for this special spray Dawn that's mostly water. But anyway, I just spray it on and let it soak in really good. And what you're trying to do is remove the oil that was on there to begin with. And it'll, when you start rinsing it with the water, it'll rinse the dirt and the oil and everything out of it. Some people I know try to use brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner or whatever on these things. And if you're not careful, you'll put something on it that'll eat the foam up and then you're buying a new filter. And then I'll just let that soak for about 10 minutes and then come back and start cleaning it out. <clears throat> okay, it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out see how we go I just want to squeeze it and work it around and see how much cleaner it's coming out And there will probably be spots that are still sticky. So if you put a little bit more Dawn on it, it will go ahead and clean that up. I don't know if y'all can see how brown that water is. You see how dirty that is. So that means that filter and oil was doing its job. Now we're getting basically clear water out of it. So that means that we've gotten the dirt and the oil out. So now we need to dry it and then re-oil it. Because now, you see how clear that water is compared to the first batch I poured out? All right, now we're gonna use some centrifugal force to get most of this water out of here. All you do is make sure you're supporting it because if you just grab it on one side, you can tear it and just sling that water out. Then I take paper towel and finish drying it. And if you leave it sit out in the sun for a little bit, it'll dry pretty quick, but we don't have a whole lot of sun today. And I don't have any of the Honda oil but I do have some K&N oil. So I'm gonna coat this thing with K&N and then we'll put it in a plastic sack and work it in. You don't want it to be drenched, but you want it to be covered. And the Honda manual says to put it on the inside and work it in. That 
is one oiled filter that we can put back in. Now, on the end of this internal cage, there's a little pin that fits in this hole. And so what you need to do is kind of collapse this down and work it around here, but don't get crazy picking up on your air intake boot. <laughs> and it's a little interesting to do with your hands all oily. All right, Did that start, yeah. And you just work it back down to where it was and you can see because it'll be a clean spot work it back up over and then get that pin back in that receptacle on the end of your filter and then put your clamp back around it oh there we go and make sure that you're seated down fully so that you don't have any unfiltered air getting into your intake And just tighten it down but don't strip it out all right there it is and I put it in with this part number up so if I need to order another one I don't have to disassemble the whole mess I can just pop the lid off and see the part number well All right, folks, I think that's going to wrap up mostly this service into this side-by-side. -side. Once I get the spring and washer in, I'll fix that oil filter correctly, unlike the dealership that had it to fix it before. Um, and I don't know if any of y'all have watched my video on fixing our dump truck fuel problem, but if you're doing stuff like this and you're out, you're away from running water, I highly recommend these things. Joe's Quick Wipes. There's another brand called Mule Wipes that you'll find in some auto parts store. But they've got a uh, hand cleaner and a pumice in them. And so they're really good about cleaning uh, grease and oil and stuff off your hands. So you don't end up, you know, jumping back in your truck or whatever and getting grease all over everything. But... I think that's going to wrap this project up uh, for the most part. So thank you for watching and y'all have a good day.